What's up guys? Today we are back in our parts of a shell series to talk about tusk shells. Tusk shells are also sometimes called tooth shells and they belong to a class of mollusks called scaphopods. Today, I'm gonna give some general background information on scaphopods and then break down the two main groups of these animals that you can find. And if you stick around until the end of the video, I'll leave you with a cool fact about these shells. Scaphopods are a relatively small class of mollusks compared to gastropods and bivalves. There are only about 350 named species. Scaphopods can be found in a wide range of ecosystems throughout our oceans. From the deep sea, over thousands of meters deep, to the shallow waters, just a few feet deep. Almost all known tusk shells are in faunal animals. This means that they spend most of their life buried in soft substrates like sand and mud. Scaphopods have a tube-shaped shell, usually with one larger opening and one smaller opening. This tube shape can be perfectly round or it can be more geometric, like a hexagon. As you can see, one of these scaphopods has a very circular shell while the other has a very geometric shell. The wider opening of a tusk shell is called the ventral aperture. This is where the head and the foot extends from the shell, allowing the animal to interact with its environment. Tusk shells will extend their shell on the side of the ventral aperture as they grow, like this. The narrow opening of a tusk shell is called the dorsal aperture. The dorsal aperture sometimes has a small notch in it, so that's something to look for. As the animal grows, the dorsal aperture will actually be broken down to make this hole larger. There are two main groups of scaphopod, dentalida and gadilida. You're probably more likely to find a dentalida on the beach, so we're gonna start with those. One key characteristic of dentalida shells is that the widest point of the shell will be the ventral aperture. Dentalida shells can have two different types of shell sculpture. They can be longitudinally ribbed or they can be smooth. This is what a dentalida shell with longitudinal ribs would look like. This is what a dentalida shell with smoother sculpture would look like. And here's a few more example of dentalida shells. Next, let's talk about gadilida shells. A key characteristic of gadilida shells is that the widest point of the shell will actually be above the ventral aperture, so not the opening of the shell. Gadilida shells can also only be found with smooth sculpture. So if you find a shell with longitudinal ribs, that rules gadilida shells out. Here's an example of a gadilida shell. And finally, here's our cool fact about these shells. Tusk shells were actually used as currency for many Native Americans of the Pacific Northwest, extending from the areas now called California all the way through to Alaska. These shells were also used to make jewelry and woven into clothing as displays of wealth. In this image, you can see an Oguala Sioux woman with these shells decorating her dress. And in this image, you can see a Native American woman with these shells woven into her hair. Thank you for watching. If you learned something new, drop a like on the video and subscribe for more content related to shells and the biodiversity of our oceans.